So, so for number one, we have suse as the masculine plural construct of susim. So if I had something like uh, suse Moshe, okay, how would I translate that? Yeah, the horses, oh, horses. plural, right, of Moses. Okay, the horses of Moses. Why am I saying the horses of Moses and not just horses of Moses or some horses of Moses? Why am I translating this as a definite noun since I don't have an article on Hasusei? I don't have an article on Susei. Since they're bound together in Moses is a uh, proper noun. Mm -hmm. they're both exactly. By virtue of being a proper name, a proper noun, that makes it definite. And the definiteness of thing two ensures the definiteness of thing one. Okay? All right. So, Susa, what does that mean? Mare. Mare. Very good. That old mare, she ain't what she used to be. You know that song? <laughs> ain't what she used to be. Ain't what she used to be. Okay, so Susa. Does this one have to change the ending? Yes. Yes. yes this is one of those endings that change. So it becomes su Susat. Susat with a pathak ta. And do I have to change any vowels here with suse or susat? No, because shurik is what kind of a vowel? It's historically long and therefore unchangeable. Unchangeable. Okay, so susat Moshe would be what? The mayor of Moses. Good. Now, what kind of a genitive is this? It's possession. It's a genitive of possession. So it, I could also translate this as Moses's mare. Moses's mare. What were some of the other genitive semantics that, that we saw in our, our our lesson? Yeah, subjective and objective genitive, and that means that the first noun would be some kind of a verbal idea. Is is horse a verbal idea? No, it's not inherently verbal, right? <laughs> to horse around is verbal, <laughs> but uh, but the noun horse does not have an inherently verbal notion. So we wouldn't want to say Moses's act of horse, <laughs> right, or something like that. What about a genitive of material? Moses is what the horse is made of. This is a horse of Moses. <laughs> Get your horse of Moses too. This is made of the finest Moses in Israel. <laughs> no. Okay, so a lot of times it's, it's, it's uh, totally obvious uh, what sort of genitive relationship you have uh, in terms of the semantics. Uh, sure, sure. It's uh, two pages front and back, so, so it ends up being, um, it's four pages but, but two loose, okay? So if you want to make sure that you divvy it up that way, it'd be great. Okay, so what's yad? Hand. Hand. That... Masculine singular or feminine singular? Masculine singular. Ah, is it masculine singular? Yes. Yod is masculine singular. Body parts are feminine in Hebrew. Almost all the time. The one exception is the word for <laughs> breast or chest. It's masculine. So, so this is feminine singular. It has no ending, though, so do I have to change the ending? No, I don't. There's no ending to change. What do I do with this long A when I make it construct? When I say yod someone, it's got to go short. Why? That's right, it's no longer accented. It's closed, but it's unaccented now, so I, my cuss rule tells me to make sure it has a short vowel. And since this is an A-class vowel, I want a short A-class vowel, don't I? I don't want to just go get any short vowel. I want to try to stay in my vowel class. Yes? What if the, uh, the, the thing too is a long word and it becomes a propriotonic? So open, it's closed. Yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I may have a long word here, and this is, you know, Propertonic, but it's still closed and propertonic, and therefore I can't reduce it to a vocal shiva. It just needs to become a short vowel. All right. What about davar? 
What gender and number is that? Masculine singular. Masculine singular. Very good. And um, what's my ending here? Nothing. Yeah, there's no ending. So do I have to change my ending to turn this into the construct state? No. Nope, I don't. So it's going to be the var. Am I going to leave the two long a's here with the var? No. To say the, the word of someone? Nope. Because I'm going to lose my stress. And what's going to happen? Var is closed, but is it accented anymore? No. No? So it's going to do what? Short. It's got to go short. Da is open, but it'll be proprotonic since the accent's going to be over on thing two. So it will do what? Reduce it'll reduce to a vocal shiva. So I'm going to get vocal shiva, pathak. Da var becomes devar. Devar. The word of so and so. All right. <clears throat> What about Devarim? What gender number is that? Masculine That's masculine plural. Good. And the im ending, can that change when I make it construct? Yes. yes. What does it become? It becomes Canadian. It's got to be Sarayod. <coughs> so Devar Ray. Okay. Now, can I leave the two long A's here? Oh, excuse me. I was ahead of vocal shiva here. Can I leave the vocal shiva commits here? After I change my ending, I have to think about changing vowels, right? Yes. If the accent is on thing two over here, then this is now open and proprotonic, right? What will this commence do? It's going to reduce to a vocal shiva. And then I've got, well, that's already a vocal shiva, right? Now I'm trying to put another vocal shiva next to it. Does Hebrew allow that? Yeah. No. Nope. What are we going to do to resolve this problem? Yes, resort to violence. Red Rider. And we put a Kyrick under the Dalit, right? So Div Ray, and my vocal Shiva is now silent. Div Ray. The words of so and so. All right, what's Melek? Okay, it's masculine singular and it means king. What kind of a noun is Melek? It is a segulet noun. How committed to first syllable stress are segulate nouns? They are so committed, aren't they? They're more committed than you are to yourself. They are committed. And that means that when I make it thing one in a construct chain and put thing two after it, what will happen to the stress on Melek? It'll stay. Does Melek have an ending to change? No. Nope. So I neither change an ending nor do I change a vowel. I am done. Melek and Melek. So if I wanted to say Moses is king, the king of Moses, it would be Melech Moshe. Melech Moshe. <coughs> All right. Now, look at Malachim. What does that mean? Kings. kings. Ah, that's kings. Notice my stress on Melech has switched, hasn't it? Because these vocalic endings of im and oath added to a segulet noun are so strong, they pull the stress to the back. Okay. So I lose my stress. So <clears throat> now my vowels have changed. Malachim. What do I have to do to make this construct? First thing I do, I do is what? Change the, ending. change the ending. Can I change that ending, Im? Yes. Yes. So it's got to be mala. Well, go ahead and use these vowels for now. Mala. Hey, I got to go Canadian, right? Im a. Im a. Okay. Now the accent's going to be somewhere over here on thing two. So that means this is unstressed and the lamed with the comets is open and proprotonic pro too. What am I going to do to that comet? It will go to vocal shiva. Can I have a vocal shiva after a vocal shiva here? Okay, so I have to resolve this, don't I? But remember, segulet nouns are quirky. What am I going to do? Got to gotta shoot out some eyes here, right? But melek takes which short vowel under the mem? Yeah, this one takes pathak. Okay, this one takes pathak, so it will become malche. Malche. Yes. Is this the same with the shiva that is a medial shiva? Yeah, so that shiva is a medial shiva, which is to say, <coughs> it's uh, it's closing and slightly opening. It's or it's it's uh, almost silent and a uh, little bit vocal. Yeah. So malche, malche. So, so no, no bagat kafat. 
If the baguette can fancy it, it won't take the doggish line. So then, so we know that it's going to be a regular just because it's a segulet noun. Mm -hmm, so right. Okay. So it's because it's a segulet noun. Sometimes you will get what you're thinking of. So let me let me give you another word. The word for grave is kever. Okay, kever. So how would I say graves plural? It would be yeah. I'd add the im, and then segulet nouns are not very committed to first syllable stress when you add the plural endings. So I get the same vowels that I get with davar, davarim, right? So it becomes kvarim. So what if I wanted to say something like the graves of Egypt, okay? The graves of Egypt. What would I do? Well, im becomes Canadian, so we're going to change that to a, right? So seriod, kvare, and then I'm going to have an open protonic syllable here that has to reduce to a vocal shiva. So I'll get rid of that. And then I've got my two vocal shivas side by side. So I'm going to have to get rid of that shiva and replace it with a short vowel. Which short vowel will this one take? Ah, yes. It takes the one that we would have liked to have seen with Melek. Okay? But uh, it ends up taking a Keurig. So Kivre. Kivre. <clears throat> How is that? Is that because it's like it's farther back in the mouth, so the vowel follows the consonant? No. Or the, we're we're going to learn this in, in, in chapter 15. Segulet nouns, um, you know, usually get the double segul pattern, but originally they were one syllable words that had an original short vowel that was either A, I, or U. And, um, and that vowel got obscured by the segel. Segel sort of took over. You know how, how many of you have ever been in a place where bamboo was, 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 um, was planted and then the bamboo starts spreading and then you can't get rid of it. Once it starts growing, it is so hard to get rid of it. Kudzu is a, is a vine that does the same thing out in the southeastern United States. It's this vine that just overtakes everything. And Segol is sort of like that. It just, it takes over. Um, and we'll see how that happens in chapter 15. But, but what ends up happening is the original short vowel of Melek, it used to be Malk, Malk. It was a one syllable word. Uh, Malk became Malik, and then Malik became Melek. The Segol uh, that, that broke up the, uh, the LK at the end, that consonant cluster, then caused the A vowel to harmonize with it, and then it obscured the real vowel. So it's only in forms like the masculine plural construct that the original vowel that was there reappears. Seems magical, but it's really not. It's just resurrecting what it used to be. <coughs> uh, okay, so let's take a look at buy it here. What's the word buy it mean? House. House. But if I want to say the house of someone, I make it a construct noun and slap it next to thing two, and can I leave the accent on by it? No. no, this is the AY diphthong that contracts when I lose the stress. By the way, by it does not a segulate noun. Melek is, okay? So just because I have first syllable stress on by it doesn't make it a segulate noun, okay? If it is a segulate noun, it will have first syllable stress in the singular. But not every noun with stress on the first syllable is a segulate noun. Okay, so what does by it become when it's in construct? Bait. Good. So I get the i becomes a. Bait. So bait, whatever. Bait lechem. Bait el. Bait moshe. Bait adonai. The house of such, such and such. Bane. What hap what's, what's bane mean? Sun. Sun, good. And um, what's um, what's going to happen with Bane when I make it the construct form, the son of so-and-so? It takes a McCaif. So Bane gets the McCaif, and then I add whatever the absolute noun is. So Moshe, for example. So Bane Moshe. What's going to happen when I add the McCaif? Yeah, Bane will lose its stress. And when I do, can I keep this long serre I class vowel? Mm -hmm. Nope, I gotta go to a short I class vowel. Mm -hmm. And which which I class vowels can I use? I could use Sigol. And I could also use Kyrick. 
could be Ben. So Ben or Ben Moshe. All right, both of those are possible. Yes. Why do you use one or the other? You don't know. Just pick one. Context or? Nope, just, just pick one. You won't know when to expect one or the other. Uh, ben is more common than Ben. I'll just tell you that. So if you had to pick one, Ben would be the more, more frequent one. Okay. Now look at Banim. We didn't actually do this in, in my, uh, my presentation or, or in class, but you can still figure this out, can't you? Uh, what does Banim mean? Sons. It's sons. Okay, this is the plural form of sons. Uh, so what's the first thing I have to do with this? Change, change the ending. This is one of those endings that can change. So im becomes hey, it becomes Canadian. So it would be bane such and such, the sons of Yisrael. Okay. Now, what if I put it... <clears throat> In a construct chain with Yisrael, where's my accent on Yisrael? Last syllable. Last syllable. So this is tonic. The Ra is pretonic. Yis is propertonic. Ne is propertonic. Ba is propertonic. And Ba is open. By the way, Ne is open as well. What do I like to do with open propertonic syllables in Hebrew? Reduce them to vocal shiva. Can I reduce the stereo to vocal shiva? No, it's historically long and therefore unchangeable. Can I reduce a kametz to vocal shiva? Yes. Yes. Well, let's do this thing. Okay, so we've reduced it to vocal shiva. Are there any other changes that have to happen here? Do I have two vocal shiva side by side? Nope. nope. This, we're all happy here. So it's B'nai. B'nai Yisrael. The sons of Israel. B'nai Yisrael. Uh, I think I may have told you that uh, when I used to drive through Southern California, I used to run into or past a synagogue called B'nai Berith. Okay? Anybody remember what Berith means? Covenant. Covenant. So look, they were transliterating for us the word B'nai, Banim in the construct. Sons of Covenant. Covenant sons. Okay? B'nai Berith. And, but here it's B'nai Yisrael in our, our example. Okay, now let's look at number 11. I have milchamot. So what gender and number is milchamot? Feminine plural. Feminine plural. All right. And the feminine plural ending ot, what happens to that when I put this feminine plural noun in the construct state? The oat doesn't change? Wait, feminine Quakers are strong. Quakers are strong. That's right. They eat their oats, right? Yeah. So oat doesn't change. Okay, good. Oat doesn't change. You're absolutely right. Man. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what does Milchamot mean? Battles. Battles. So if I want to refer to the battles of Israel, the battles of Israel, then uh, this is going to become thing one in a construct chain, right? Thing two will be somewhere over here to the left of it. And the oat doesn't change, but I might have some vowel changes happen, right? So what's going to happen here? I can't change the oat, right? Like if I had Yisrael over here, I know I'd have a tonic syllable at the end, pretonic, propertonic, Yisrael, right? And then oat, moat would be propertonic, wouldn't it? Should I reduce that to a vocal shiva? No. no, why not? Because it's closed, right? Holom vav is a vowel. Every vowel needs a consonant to lead it, right? And so my syllable here is moat. That's closed and propertonic. It doesn't follow the open propertonic syllables reduced to vocal shavak. Um, what about the cuss rule? Can I, can I re require a short vowel of this uh, closed, unaccented syllable? No. no, that's right, because holom vav is historically long. It's unchangeable. So it gets to stay just the way it is. Okay, but look, I have ha, ha. That is open and propertonic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What's Hebrew going to do with an open propertonic syllable? It will reduce the vocal shiva. So let's reduce this to. Oh, it won't erase. Let me rub it a little harder. No, nope, it won't go away. So I'm going to put a vocal shiva here. Now, can I put a vocal shiva here? 
Why not? It's a gutter. <gasps> oh my goodness. Now we have to remember gutter rules. I told you everything we've learned in our class applies in this chapter, right? So guts gang. Chetz is in the gutter rules. And what do I learn about gutter rules? No dogish forte. No local shiva. Instead, I put what? Compound shiva. So I got to go with. Well, usually an A-class compound shiva, right? So that's the, the the way I write this in the feminine plural construct. So it becomes mil, not not mil chamot, but mil chamot, mil chamot, mil chamot. Is it okay to have multiple um, <coughs> Yes, because I can have a silent shiva followed by a vocal shiva or a compound shiva, right? That's okay. But what I can't have are two vocal shavas or a vocal shava and a compound shava, or a compound shava and a vocal shava. Okay, so we're good. Mil chamot, mil chamot. By the way, this would have been closed and unaccented. Would I have had to change the curic vowel? Mm -hmm. It's already short. No, because it's already short, so there's no vowel change needed here. All right. So there you go. So that's uh, that's our little drill sheet. So now you don't have to do this later. Okay. But does that help? That make, make things a little clearer? Okay, good. Let us go to the actual homework now. And we have, uh, let's see. I think you're asked to put some things in the construct over here as well. How many of these did I ask you to do? Well, Twelve. That blessed patriarchal number. <laughs> Any questions on these twelve? Okay, so looking at number eight. So the answer I have here for the king of glory is Melech Hakavod, right? Let's assume just for a minute that I had just put Melech Hakavod. All right? Uh, that would be an arthris, not articular, and Melech would be an arthris. So how would you translate that? A king of glory, right? Okay, uh, so there's there's two things in play here. This is articular um, in situations where in Hebrew we typically might not have put an article on an abstract noun. Uh, Hebrew will, will will do that sometimes, uh, and then secondly, without the article, I end up with an indefinite first member of the construct chain. But this is the King of Glory, isn't it? So. In English, even though the article is on the Hebrew noun, I'm not going to translate it in, into English because putting putting the in front of an abstract noun like this just isn't good English, right? Yeah. Thank you. Like if I wanted to say the Lord of Love, right? I wouldn't really say the Lord of the Love in, in English, right? Right. <clears throat> okay, good. What else? Other questions about this? First section. Number four. So number four, what what's the expression we're tr trying to? The name of this land, the name of this land. So, um, the word this is zot, right? And is in our expression here. Let me just go back to our our Ross chapter number four. The name of this land. Is this functioning as a demonstrative uh, pronoun or a demonstrative adjective? adjective? It's an adjective, right? It's telling you which land. I have a, an explicit noun here, so this is the adjective. And that means it has to go where in relation to the noun? It's got to go after the noun. But look, I have of. So I've got a construct chain that's going to involve land and name, right? So it's the name of the land. And then this has to go after that, because I can't put anything in between the construct noun and the absolute noun. Okay, 
So that's what I have to do is I have to figure out how to say the name of the land and then I add the this after the name of the land. So the name of the land of the this, uh, the name of the land of the this, okay? And that's what I've got in my answer key. So laying aside Hazot for a minute, the name of the land is Shem Haaretz, okay? Notice I cannot put the article here. Why not? That's right. How frequently do you not put the article on the construct form of the noun? That's right. Yeah, you always don't. <laughs> or you never do. Okay? You cannot. How do you know it's definite? Based on the definiteness of the second noun, the absolute noun, or the genitive noun. So, that ha'aritz is really important. That means I have to translate this as the name of the land. And then I have the this. So, <clears throat> how do I decide which form of this to use? What is this modifying? It's this land. So I've got to ask myself, what gender is land? Feminine. It's feminine. So which form of the, the demonstrative do I need? I need the feminine singular form. So I could have used they if it were a masculine noun, but I have to use zot because it's feminine. And why have I added the article to this? Well, because both nouns of the construct chain are definite by virtue of the article here on thing two. And so it doesn't matter which noun it's modifying, I've got to put the article, right? But what the gender of the adjective is that's modifying has to agree with whichever these two it's modifying. So uh, Haaretz is feminine. I need a feminine form of this. So Hazot. So it's the name of this land. The name of this land. Yes? If we saw that in Hebrew, would we be able to know that this is on hearts because Shem is masculine? So it can be modified. Zot can mas modify Shem? Shem is masculine, and uh, it would be Shem Haaretz Hazay. Good, good question. Uh, any others? Yeah, Tay. Um, why aren't we seeing constructs with definite articles and then absolute with indefinite? What, say that again? Like, why aren't we seeing the constructs with definite and then, like, paired with an absolute with an indefinite? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, um, you can't put the article on the first noun or the construct noun, so you'll never see it being articular at all. No matter what, it'll never have the article. But uh, can it occur in construct with an absolute noun that is not definite? And the answer is yes, it can. And um, I don't know that we actually have an example here, uh, but let, let, let me just give you one. If I wanted to say something like, uh, let's see. Um, Oh, oh no, here's, here's Ben Ish, number two. There's the word for son in construct with Ish. Ish is not articular, and ben, ben can't be articular. So I need to translate this as a son of man, or a son of a man. I can't remember how Ross translated this. Either this would be appropriate. What did he say? Ah, oh, son of man, right. <clears throat> okay, so so there's an example. Now, what if one of them's definite and one's not? Can I use a construct chain for that? No, you can't. It's a package deal, right? Either both are definite or both are not definite, but I can't have a construct chain where one's definite and one's not. What do I do? I use the preposition lamed between the two, and they'll both be in the absolute state. Okay. Yeah, so if I want to say a son of the man, how would I do that? It would be Bain, and then, oops, no, I wouldn't put the McCabe there. And I, it would be, have to be the absolute, so it would be, have to be Sarah, right? Ben, Bain, I'm sorry, La Ish. Okay, mm -hmm. a son to the man means a son of the man. A son to the man is a son of a man. A son of the man. Sorry. 
I knew you were going to ask me that. So how would you do that? Well, you make bane articular. So ha bane. And then the lamed would change the kemet to a shiva because there would be no article here. So ha bane, the son, to a man. Which would we would translate that as the son of a man. But but that's not a construct chain either. These are this is the absolute form of vein, right? I haven't reduced the vowel. It is the way I want it to be. I have an article on it. I could never have the article on a construct form. <clears throat> okay, good. Any other questions here? Hey, our beer cat showed up over here. <laughs> It's used in nine like it's a proper name, but then in four on D, it has the article in front of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is interesting. Sometimes you ha you have Elohim and it refers to the God of Israel, and it doesn't mean a God. It's 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 at, almost as if it were title. I mean a, a name, uh, and then even though it's technically not a proper noun, right? Uh, and then sometimes it does have the article. You just still translate it, I think, as God. Now, there are some places where Ha Elohim is being used with a true articular connotation to refer back to a God that was mentioned. And um, it's like when uh, the sailors in Jonah's situation say, uh, get up and cry out to your God, perhaps Ha Elohim will hear us and give, give attention to us. And there, I think it means perhaps that God, your God, will will do will do this. Okay, so let's uh, real quickly take a look at these sentences that are in Ross, in the B section. Are any of these uh, problematic? You wanna wanna talk about them? Let's do it. Number one, how do we translate lo shama'u ha'avadim? Lo shama'u ha'avadim. Yeah, that's not. Shama'u, that's a shuric ending. Yeah, that's third common plural. So they didn't shama. What's shama? They didn't listen to, hear, or obey. Now, do I have an overt subject? Is this a possible subject here? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's masculine plural, right? That could be the subject of the third common plural verb. So what's what's avadim? Servants. servants. Ha avadim. The so the servants didn't listen to, hearken to, le kol hamelech. This is what they didn't listen to. Okay. What is the lamed here? That's a preposition. And lamids as prepositions attach to what? They attach to the object of a preposition. So is my object of the preposition just the word coal? Or is this a construct chain and does my object of the preposition have to stretch out to the end of the expression? Yeah, it includes hamelech. They didn't just listen to a voice. Notice there's no article here, right? They didn't just listen to a voice, they listened to the voice of someone, okay? Now, can I tell by looking at Cole here that it is in the construct state? Mm -hmm. No, there's no ending, so I didn't have to change an ending to put it in the construct state if I wanted to. And Cole has a holum vav as its vowel. That's historically long, so would I reduce it if I put it in the construct state? No. no. So the construct and the absolute states of this noun are the same. Okay? So here it is purely going to be contextual. If I assume that the object of the preposition is only coal and that this is not a construct chain, then what I'm saying is the servants did not listen to a voice. And then I have this dangling word out there, the king. Well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? 
Now, <clears throat> it could be evocative use of the article. The servants didn't listen to a voice, O oh, king. Okay, so maybe that would work. But still, just saying that servants didn't listen to a voice doesn't really sound very plausible. Okay? But if I take this as a construct chain, it certainly is going to make good sense, right? Because listening to the voice of someone sounds a lot more plausible than just listening to a voice, right? So that's thing one, that's thing two. And then, because I've got the article on thing two, I need to translate thing one as art articular two. So to the voice of the king. Okay. All right. Any any other questions, real quick? Number three, there's another shurik at the end of this verb, so it's some plural noun walked or went. Now look at what I have next, gibore. Is that plural? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not just plural, it's masculine plural construct because it's Canadian, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So it's warriors of. Now here's the question, should I say the warriors of or just warriors of? What do I have to look at to know? Absolute. Look at the next noun. Is it absolute? Is the absolute definite? Yes. yes, because it's a proper noun. So I need to say the warriors of Israel went or walked la milchama to the, to the battle. And then the key clause is probably going to tell me why, right? Because God gave. There's my verb. Elohim is my subject. God gave Yeshua Gedolah. Great. Yes, he gave a great salvation or a great deliverance. Okay? Is this a construct chain? Yeshua good Allah? That's a noun. Is good Allah now? No. It's an adjective. So I only have construct chains if I have noun nouns slapped up to, next to each other. Thing one, thing two. Okay? If I have noun adjective, then this is probably an attributive adjective and it's telling me what kind of noun, right? So it's a great salvation. No article, they, so it matches gender, number, and indefiniteness. Okay? All right. Any final parting shots here? Um, with that sentence, we also know that it's not linked because it doesn't have, oh, what is the symbol called that we, we want? <clears throat> this, this new symbol here? Mm -hmm. The Munach accent? That's right there, yeah. Yeah, that's a conjunctive accent which binds two nouns more closely together often used in construct form, but not always. But it's not a disjunctive accent, which means, you know, with disjunctive accents, what follows goes more with what comes after, right? And what the disjunctive accent is on goes with what precedes. With conjunctive accents, like here's my conjunctive accent, the Munak here, that means that it goes with what comes after, not with what comes before, okay? or not as closely with what comes before. <clears throat> All right, good. Well, we'll stop there. And uh, what's today, Friday? So Monday we'll do our quiz on chapter two, 12, and not two. You'd love a quiz on chapter two, wouldn't you? I wonder how many of you would pass a quiz on chapter two. <laughs> All right, read chapter 13, if you haven't.